All right, everyone, welcome back again to more Umineko. I gotta say, with this part of the episode, I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. If only because it felt as if certain things were finally coming to light. As well as, I had a lot of fun just theorizing as to the possibilities of what may happen in the upcoming last half of this episode. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm coming close to some semblance of the truth here, but again... We won't know until we finish this episode, but to those in the know, hey, good for you guys, because this is exciting for me as it is for you, having to re-watch this again, but from my point of view this time. So if anything else, guys, thank you all for the love and support. Hope you all continue to enjoy, and let's continue on. All right, everyone, welcome back. Or Gilia, who had suddenly appeared there, gave me an immediate answer to my question with the red truth. That would be way too simplistic even for Bieto, yes. それも違うのかはい。第一、もともと黄金教の黄金はこの子のもの。I want to say the meaning behind the golden land belongs to her. 見つけさせる必要も、横取りする必要も、Okay, I, th、uh, I want to believe that. Of course, Beato's Beatrice the Golden. She's the master of the Golden Land and the Oshinomiya family alchemist. That makes total sense. However, if that's true, that makes me even more confused. Even if someone exposes the answer to the Epitaph's riddle, Beato gains nothing. No, to the contrary, she might get her own gold stolen away. なら、ますますにわからない。非分殺人はわかる。後ろ脈に対する復讐とか、あるいは魔女としての力を復活させるための儀式とか。こいつなりの理由や目的があってやってるんだろうからな。だが、非分の謎を解けというのにはどんな意
think. Don't stop thinking. The epitaph murders and solving the riddle of the epitaph have equal worth. As long as the epitaph murders, which are Bieto's goal each time, have this single way that they can be stopped, a way that she decided on herself, both are worth the same thing to her. X equals Y. And whether the epitaph's riddle is solved or not, Bieto gains nothing. Y equals zero. So, in this case, what is X? Oi, oi. So, that's it. He won't have to do 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 it. He won't have to I flipped over the chessboard many times exploring Bieto's moves. This was always the first place I stumbled. The significance of the epitaph murders. Why did she have to commit serial murders in a way that reproduced the witch's epitaph? If she wanted to kill the whole Ushiromiya family for revenge, it would be much simpler, safer, and more reliable if she just put a poison into their dinner. Or else went around killing people one by one in the middle of the night while they were sleeping. However, on the first evening, Bieto sends us a letter that sounds like an advance notice. I make it also be she wants them to suffer. Like, I feel like Bieto has a connection to each of the family members, or at the very least has a connection to, you know, one of them. And each, each action she takes in terms of wanting to murder them means that she has a vendetta against, you know, each of them for some reason. And then carries out what could be broadly described as a three-part serial murder. Killing six people in the first twilight, two in the second, and five in the fourth and later. We aren't fools. Once the first murders occur, we barricade ourselves in somewhere to stave off any further murders. Furthermore, we quickly suspect a culprit among us and start analyzing each other's alibis. As the victims increase, the number of suspects decrease automatically. And Bieto's chances of completing the serial murder drop closer and closer to zero. Everything about the epitaph murders is full of useless ornament and empty decoration. That only seems to make it harder for her to carry out the serial murder. A personal challenge? So ミステリー小説では、こういう非分殺人のことを見立て殺人という。この見立て殺人が行われる理由を、俺は三つに対別できると思ってる。伺いましょう。一つは、非分に沿うことで、証拠やアリバイをごまかし、犯人に利するためだ
明白に非分殺人を遂行していることを示す手紙や状況証拠が次々に見つかるはずですああそうだな偶然なんかじゃないベアとは初めから非分殺人を見せつける目的で遂行している俺たちが誤解してるんじゃないこれは明白な見立て殺人なんだだからこの理由でもないとなると最後の一つの理由になりますね最後の一つは見せつけることつまり恐怖だ非分に沿うということは殺人が連続するという明白な予告だ生存者たちは続くに違いない殺人にずっと怯えさせられることになるつまりこの子は死の恐怖を味わわせるために非分殺人をと思うと割と収まりがいいグロい遺体損壊も悪趣味な装飾も全て俺たちを怖がらせるための演出誰を怖がらせるためなのですかえだからそれは俺たちを<笑> After hearing that one line Virgilia spoke so casually my thoughts clouded over once again Is it really enough to just use the big word us? There are a lot of people in the Ushiromiya family There's the head and the one who holds the rank of his successor, grandfather and Uncle Kraus. Our parents who have some pull in the business world. On the other side, you have the young cousins who usually visit at most once a year. And the unfortunate servants who just happen to be on duty. Even if the culprit hated all of us, they probably didn't hate all of us equally. They might have made it clear which of, the, which of those among us they particularly wanted to take revenge against and terrify. If we liken this to a kid eating dessert, Isn't the strawberry on top of a shortcake the part you should eat last? No one tells you that you shouldn't eat it first, but our mentality leads us into saving it for later. So, the most of the people who are in the world are in the world. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 悲しみを味わわせてから最後に本人を殺すってのが。Then, by that logic, that person hates Battler. At least, the way it was going for the past few times, because Battler was the one suffering the most, because he witnessed every single murder all the time. And he's the, the piece that is, you know,、um, a part of this game to begin with. And also, there was that last half of the previous episode where Bieto wanted him to remember something. It was important to her that he remembered it, but he couldn't. It's almost as if Bieto felt like she was abandoned or something by Battler in the past. Which is why she's making him regret it? Kuwabara, Kuwabara. Ja, Saigo made Ikinoko Yatsuga, Motomo Beato ni Uramare Terutte Rompo ni Narze. Okay, I have a very big idea now of. <clears throat> At least this thing came into my mind, guys. Hear me out. So he brought up this book that he liked that spoke of how, um, How the best way to, to torture someone or murder them is to murder, them, mur murder those closest to you prior to saving the victim that you, were,、uh, you wanted to kill for last. What if Battler shared that novel with someone and that someone learned it? Could that person be Bieto? Which would obviously make sense. If Battler knew Bieto when they were young, That's so weird. Shikashi, <laughs>
There's only me. 先に赤で申し上げておきましょうバトラ君は犯人ではありませんよ、well. yeah. バトラ君は誰も殺してはいません、yeah. これは全てのゲームにおいて言えることです<咳> That can be said of all games. Nara Nao no Koto. Ore te Koto ni nare. Koitz ga hibun satsin o oko su yuitz no liu wa. Ore ni mise tsuke ru tame te Koto ni nare. So, Bieto has a personal vendetta against you. And again, it might correlate to the whole promise thing. Bieta's always making out that she chooses who to kill next by roulette. But I'm an exception. The only exception. Though she does kill me in the end, she always leaves me be until the very last moment. In all these supposedly random games, there is only this one unchanging constant. それは違います。恐怖を味わわせるのが目的ではありません。Regret? Maybe? Again, the promise, right? 誰かに復讐するためのものでもありません。Okay, it might not be a revenge, but still, it's something. Again, a personal vendetta, I guess. なら、やはり。非分殺人には意味なんてないことになる。非分の謎も無意味。ついとなる非分殺人も無意味。X イコール Y イコールゼロだが、その無意味をこいつは、明白に俺に対して見せつけている。無意味なことと、どう価値の何を俺に求めているんだわ<笑>からねえ考えれば考えるほどに、こいつが何を考えてるのか。俺にはわからねえ。ビアトリス、the fickle witch who committed a meaningless, worthless serial murder, even the riddle of the epitaph which she made into a condition to suspend the serial murders, is meaningless, immaterial. And she's thrusting this meaningless, immaterial thing in front of my face. What is it that you want from me, or else what is it that you want to give me? My idea that Bieto must have been taking revenge on me has already been refuted and read by Virgilia. Both X and Y. Both the epitaph murders and the epitaph riddle mean nothing to Bieto. Or, she's doing all this in a, like, in a very strange fashion to get him to remember. X equals Y equals zero. However, since she's thrusting that in front of me, it must have some meaning. She presents us a pair of scales representing if you don't solve the epitaph, I'll carry out the epitaph murders. So, could the epitaph be trying to get him to remember? Is that the whole point? Neither the epitaph murders nor the epitaph riddle have any significance by themselves. However, it becomes meaningful when she puts both halves in the scales and thrusts it out before us. No, before me. In other words, it should be like this x equals zero, y equals zero. X plus Y is greater than less than zero. A scale with meaningless, weightless things on both sides. However, it has weight itself and gives the rest meaning. Marde. Asobi da na. Kodomo no janken mitai da. Rock, paper, scissors is the most immediate method of randomly determining a winner and a loser. You usually bet some sort of privilege on the outcome, but kids often do rock, paper, scissors just to play without betting anything in particular. Unless you bet something, nothing but a feeling of joy or disappointment will come from a win or a loss. The two sides of the scale, winning and losing, are both valueless. However, the very act of seeing which way it will rip, tip, <laughs> rip is the reason kids play rock, paper, scissors. After all, kids are enjoying the communication that surrounds the game, and they aren't purely interested in the value of winning or losing. They aren't overly concerned about who wins and who loses. So, the Japan to Nito, the Hibun Satsuma. Say, go stemo, shinak, temo, e monote, kotoni, natchima. 
まるでその過程そのものを楽しんでいるかのようにさえ思える<笑>以前の俺なら無意味な殺人を繰り返す非道な魔女だと決めつけこいつを罵っただろうさだが今の俺にはそうとは思えないありがとうだから赤をもう一つ与えましょうベアトは快楽目的で殺人を行っていることはありません I was honestly just started to think that just now prior to her Um, saying this in red, I feel like this whole time Bieto never wanted to really murder people or play this sick game. But this was the only means for her to get Battler to remember her or remember whatever problems it was. I think the whole goal is at the end of the day for her to get him to realize who she really is. She didn't do it for pleasure and she didn't do it to make anyone feel for her. She has nothing to gain from the Epitaph murders, and she doesn't care whether they succeed or fail. It's almost like a random game kids would play. It has meaning to her. Of course, it isn't meaningless. Some meaning definitely exists. In the previous game, she urged me to remember my sin of six years ago. Was that meaningless too? No. There's no way that's the case. See? Okay, we're getting somewhere. I clearly remembered the serious look in her eyes at that moment. Unfortunately, I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. And she was devastated. That's right. At that time, I'm sure she even went so far as to say that the crime wouldn't have occurred if I hadn't come. Imiwa. あるんだこいつにとってはそしてそれを俺に求めてる I laughed softly and poked Bieto lightly on the head then patted her head <笑>ラブレターには次からは好きですと短く書くことを勧めるぜあまり回りくどくて難解だと意味が伝わらねえぞこいつが何を考えてるのか。あい、だが、俺は考えることをやめないぜ。まだまだ鉄板をひっくり返せ。お前の思考をたどる旅を。Battler did nothing but gaze lazily out the window. The fighting between the relatives continued without end. At first, the relatives had crowded around the study. However, no matter how much they knocked, the master of the study did not answer even once. Ava and several others said that they should open the door with the second key, the one Genji held. However, in a flash of brilliance, Natsu said that Kinzo had been in a particularly bad mood and had taken back the key that he had previously, gi previously given to Genji, meaning that he now had both keys himself. She claimed that it was therefore impossible for him to open the door. After she promised to let them meet Kinzo tomorrow morning, no matter what, they finally returned to the dining hall. But of course, the argument continued on even after they returned there. Ava's group wanted a lot of cash very soon, and they were trying to threaten Krauss somehow and make him pay up. Apparently, Battler's solving of the epitaph which threatened Krauss's position as the next head had given the others a huge tailwind. On the other side, Krauss and Nazi denied the very basis of their argument, claiming that it had never been specified that ownership of the gold would be handed over to the person who solved the epitaph. They asserted that it hadn't been hidden in gold. They asserted that it hadn't been hidden gold, but just Kinzo's stockpile. And it was still Kinzo's property, which meant it was only natural for it to be distributed after Kinzo's death with the rest of the inheritance. After hearing this, Ava's group once again started demanding that they be allowed to see Kinzo. It had probably been the clearest day from the beginning. This sibling fight could only be settled by Kinzo. 
It was obvious that this confrontation was between Ava's group which wanted cash fast and Krauss who was hiding his lack of funds but still didn't need money right away. As Battler listened vaguely to this exchange, he marveled at how despite their usual affluent affairs, they were all surprisingly deep in debt. And then by the next day, that's when you go with the excuse that he went missing in the forest. According to the clock, it was almost midnight. It was certainly a perfect time for a break. The atmosphere relaxed just a bit. どうかいや。まったくだわ。下の根も乾かないうちにそんなことは言ってないなんて。平気で言い出す兄さんとの会議に議事録は必須だものね。文字じゃ書くのも手間だし、インチキだっていくらでもできるわ。そうだな。<
大変ねそういうお役目ですのでご用命いただけて嬉しいですそうかもしれんなすることもなくぼんやり起きてる方がしんどいもんやわしも下積み時代に倉庫番とかやったことあるんやけどなただ起きてるだけでもこれがとにかくつらいんや戦争直後はな物資泥棒とかゾロゾロってな Alright everyone, I'm gonna end it here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're gonna continue on and see if they make it through the next day.